So you want to listen to what's happening on New Year's Eve when the ball drops. Listen, I've been doing this for well over a decade. This is very exciting and something that most of us can do right from home in our living rooms. Now, what I like to do is watch the ball drop in Times Square because I'm in the New York City area right here on Long Island. And if I listen to my scanner, I can actually hear the directors of ABC TV giving the play-by-play and the cues and what to do and who's the next guy online and who the next act is and when Ryan Seacrest should actually speak. And I'm going to tell you how to do exactly the same thing. Now, this may not transpose where you live exactly, but if you're in a metropolitan area, a large metropolitan area or a large city, this should work out very well for you. So the first thing I recommend that you do is go to Radio Reference and you go to your area. So being that I'm on Long Island, we're going to use the New York City metro area as the example. But I'm going to show you how this works for other locations as well. So we're going to click on Browse here in the database and I'm going to go to New York. Now, the trick here is I'm not going to be searching by county. I'm going to be searching by metro area. So right here in the middle, we're going to click on the New York City area. And we're going to click on Browse. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for media in the New York City area. So I'm going to click on media here. Again, we've got media in New York City County. I don't know why they call it New York City County. And if we look, we have radio and television. Now I know the big show that happens is on WABC. This is the one that happens in Times Square that most people tune into. So if I look at WABC on Radio Reference, I will see that we have WABC TV, we have ABC Network Queuing, we also have TV Chapter 77, Um, we also have other TV channels here too, such as WCBS, WNBC, again, assignment desks, citywide, production and engineering. These are all frequencies you want to have in because there's another national event that also happens on WNBC. Now, I'm sure there's other smaller ones that may also happen on other TV channels, but this is the major channels in the New York City area. Okay. So these are the ones we want to look out for. Very simple and easy to look for. Now, I also know that the big event that happens on Channel 7, which is the Ryan Seacrest, the Dick Clark, Rockin' New Year's Eve thing, they have multiple different locations that they broadcast from. The big one, of course, being Times Square, which is why we're looking at New York City. But they also have remotes in, say, Los Angeles. And I think even down in New Orleans, and there might be another one uh, somewhere else. But let's take a look at Los Angeles. So again, we're going to go to the Radio Reference Database. We're going to click on Browse. We're going to click on California. And we are going to click on Metro Area, Los Angeles, and click on Browse. And we are going to look for Media. So we're going to click on Media right here. And again, we scroll down through Radio, and then we get to TV. And what do we notice here? Well, we have KABC TV Assignment Desk. We have KABC Engineering. We have two uh, TV 7 and 9 IFBs. Again, the IFB is the link between the director and the field units. The IFB is what it is you most likely want to listen to. But again, you may want to listen to the engineering or the director's channel. It may be different wherever you are, and it may change from year to year. But as we also look here, we've also got the KNBCs, right? Again, the other big show happens on NBC. So let's take a look here. We also have a KABC TV trunked radio system. And when we click on this, we will find that it is a NXDN Next Edge system with several different towers or sites and also some talk groups down here. So if we are in the LA area, we may want to look at this too. Now, there's also different types of feeds going down in Miami, Florida, and also Disneyland as well. But let's go down again to Miami. Again, we go Florida, and let's go right down to Miami. And we look at, let's see, media here. What do we come up with? But We have remotes. So our homework is a little bit harder when it comes to trying to listen to this remote down in Miami. But we know that most of these links are in the 450 range. So let's try to concentrate any searches in that area. So we got one more in the New Orleans area. Let's go ahead and click on there. So we're going to click Louisiana. Again, metro area is New Orleans. We're going to click on Browse. Let's look at the New Orleans Parish and click on Media. And we only have one here, this New Orleans WLL. So we're striking out down here. Let's take a look. We see we have others that we can take a look at here. Nothing. Nothing here. 
So again, we're going to need to get creative and do a search in the 450 to say the 460 range and see if we can identify any links that are available for us to listen to. Now, why are we so interested in listening to these? Well, first of all, we get to hear the director talking to the people out in the field, right? What cameras they want, who's going to go on the air next, what acts are going to be next in queue, and the countdown to when the next uh, talking head is going to be in front of the camera. But what's really interesting about listening to some of these links is the fact that as soon as the sun sets, as soon as it starts getting dark out, that is when the action happens for a lot of these pre-recorded segments that we are seeing that we are assuming is live TV, but it's not. It's actually B-roll. It's actually stuff that was recorded way earlier in the evening between, say, 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And before they even go live with their pre-show, this is all done already. It's recorded. We can hear the information come over the IFB channel, and we can listen to this and hear a lot of this pre-stage stuff that happens. We can also hear when they are doing their rehearsals for the live performance. Who knows? Maybe the rehearsal is what they are doing at the live show because, again, a lot of this stuff is happening not in real time. It's unbelievable how much information, when you're listening to this, you can actually hear. Now, if you're not in a metro area, maybe you live out too far to listen to this, I know a lot of communities also hold their own celebrations also. So it may not be televised. This part of it may not hold true to you. But the next part should, could, or will hold true to you. And what is that? Well, we want to look at our police departments because who is the one that will be crowd control, directing traffic, and keeping people safe? Let's take a look at NYPD because, again, that's Times Square. So, again, we're going to go back to Radio Reference. We're going to go to Browse. I'm going to go to New York. We're going to click in New York City, and we are going to look at NYPD. Now, I know from years of experience of listening to NYPD during this, we have four channels we're going to primarily want to look through. We're going to go to Citywide 1, 2, 3, or 4. Now, in my experience, it has usually been Citywide 3, 2, or 1 that we find the most amount of activity on here, and it's a zoo. It is a lot of activity happening on a single channel. There's a lot going on. There's plenty of roll calls, street closures. And unfortunately, I feel that this may be slim pickings as far as what's going to happen in the future. But for now, we can really enjoy what it is that we are trying to listen to. So what do we hear in this? Like I said, we hear a lot of roll closures. We hear roll calls. We hear um, things that are in alert, lost people, lost children, those kinds of things. Traffic control, when the barricades are going to be put up, when parking enforcement happens. And NYPD is hopping all day long due to the detail that's involved with this big event that happens in Times Square. So not only do we get the information that happens across the local precincts that cover this, but most importantly, we have the detail that happens on these citywide channels here. So what does that mean? That means we need to think about outside of New York City, where you have these smaller communities, maybe you'll have a tactical channel. Maybe you'll have some other interoperable channel that your department is going to fall back on to keep the dispatch channel open for routine dispatches, the routine tactical channel available for routine tactical stuff, but they use a third channel or a designated reserve channel for the activity that's happening on there. So do not discount any type of interop channel or any type of mutual aid channel that you happen to see in radio reference for the area that you want to listen to. And for example, right here in New York City, we have this New York Metropolitan Advisory Committee, this NY Mac. These are some uh, interoperable channels that we can find here in New York. Now, additionally, we may find some interop channels on a trunk radio system. And we have this NYCICN, which is the New York City Interoperable Communications Network. Hey, it's written right there in a tin. And again, if we scroll through here, we can find we have emergency management. We have also DOT, which could be very important when it comes to road closures and parking enforcement. But what we're looking for here and what's missing are actual talk groups that are des designated interoperability. So maybe we may find some talk groups that we are not aware of yet pop up and show up on this system come New Year's Eve. Another thing we want to look at, which is very important, is the Office of Emergency Management. OEM is really the higher level of management that oversees any type of big disaster. OEM may be 
enacted on New Year's Eve, especially in a metropolitan area like New York City, just because of the sheer size of, and the number of people that are in a particular area and how many eyeballs are actually on Times Square. It can be very important to have these people just on standby and ready to go and just overseeing that make sure that things are moving smoothly throughout the city. And finally, one more thing to look at is maybe the local fire districts because, again, you're going to have EMS on standby. You may have fire on standby. Uh, again, with thousands and tens of thousands of people cramming into small areas, fireworks on display and whatnot, you're going to have people who have accidents, who need help, and you're going to have an ambulance or two or maybe more on standby. So here in New York City, we actually have FDNY EMS. And again, we have a whole list of frequencies here, and we would listen to them over on the citywide channel normally for an event like this. Also, don't forget too, we've got the main fire department here. Um, on the trunk system, we also have plenty of activity. So in summary, at this point right now, we want to make sure that we have our media. And again, I listen to mostly the media channels. I think that's the greatest thing since sliced bread when uh, listening to something like the ball drop in Times Square. Uh, listen to local PD, fire and emergency services such as paramedics or the EMS channels and OEM. Now, if you're interested in listening to any of this stuff from Times Square, I do live stream this on my personal website at w2lie.net. And we'll put a link in the description so you can listen to it this year as well. Now, on the other side of this break, I've got some more hints and tips when it comes to listening to the activity on New Year's Eve. Be right back. All right, so the event happened. The event is now over. It's midnight. There is confetti everywhere. And now everybody's leaving. They're all drunk and stumbling out, and they're trying to get in the subways. They're trying to help, you know, taxi cabs. They're trying to get to the railroad to get out of New York City, right? What happens then? Well, now all of a sudden, Times Square is empty. Who comes in behind all the crowd to make sure that Times Square is ready to reopen? The Department of Sanitation. The Department of Sanitation in New York does an outstanding job of cleaning up all of the confetti and the huge mess left behind by everybody celebrating the new year. When it comes to midnight, I, I focus on there when it comes to scanning. And DSNY, like I said before, does an outstanding job. And how we listen to DSNY? Now, they are on the NYCICN trunk system. And if we scroll down to the Department of Sanitation, we will see a pile of talk groups for them here. Now, I think they would be on Manhattan because that's the borough that, you know, <laughs> that the event happens in. So that's really where I would take a look and listen to. But again, we've got announcement channels and we have enforcement channels as well. So again, we may hear some of the activity here prior to and during the event where they are looking for tows and vehicles that are that are parked in areas that are set aside for no parking zones or temporary no parking zones. So DSNY, your local sanitation or your local cleanup crew is something that you may want to listen to when it comes time to scanning New Year's Eve activity where you live. Some other ideas to listen to are CERT which is a civilian emergency response team, they may be active or requested to volunteer by the local OEM. Another group to listen to may be Amateur Radio Emergency Services, or ARIES. Uh, amateur radio operators have been known to volunteer their time when it comes to helping out during community events, such as marathons, um, walks, parades, and even something could be as big as this. Now, I'm not saying that in New York City, they request the needs of amateur radio, but it might be where you live, you may find on the amateur radio repeaters that there are some coordination efforts going on on some amateur radio repeaters that co coincide with the events happening for New Year's Eve. I'm not saying you're definitely going to, but it's a possibility. And of course, there's also a possibility that maybe the local GMRS, React, or something else may be involved as well. So don't discount listening to GMRS. Again, you may hear something, you may not hear something. Again, I know what happens where I live, and here on Long Island, I listen to what happens in New York City. But if you're not near metropolitan area, and again, there's something that happens in your town, who knows who they're going to bring in. Which is also why I suggest looking at the FCC database for S 
STAs. An STA is a special temporary authority for allows a particular user to use frequencies for a event, for a special event. It's a temporary license that expires at, you know, set number of days after the event is over. And this allows you to coordinate, bring up a repeater, bring up point to point communications, coordinate your event, do your thing and then move on. So we see these a lot when it comes to big events. Um, we, we see these when it happens with uh, golf tournaments and, and stuff like that. We bring a lot of radio users into a particular area and, you know, that's what happens. Uh, PGA events, Live Nation events, stuff like that, right? Well, who else do we listen to here as well? Well, I strongly recommend bringing a scanner if you're going to a live event and scanning through the FRS channels or even the business band channels, because a lot of these smaller companies may just be using blister pack radios to communicate with the staff who are there. It's not unheard of. I've heard that some fireworks operators and companies use FRS or other you know, business band radios in order to communicate with the people who are out in the field who are coordinating when to light each piece of the display. If you're going to an event, be aware, you may need to pass through, you know, security, whatnot, and they may confiscate a scanner. But in some of these smaller town displays, you may not have that to worry about. You may be able to get by with your scanner. And for those that like to play at home, maybe you'll find some new talk groups on a trunk radio system. Again, I just talked about it earlier with the New York City system that maybe we'll find some interrupt talk groups that aren't already on radio reference during the New Year's Eve activity. Well, you may also find that on some community trunk systems where again it's a DMR or NXDN system maybe an old LTR system community uh, repeaters community trunk systems where you find bus companies tow companies uh, all different kinds of services and talk groups on that repeater system or that trunk system you may find that they rent radios from the host owners of these systems think like Bearcom for example and again you may find temporary talk groups that show up for that particular event. That happens here when we have the New York City Marathon. There's a couple of talk groups that we don't see at any other time in the year. But when the New York City Marathon pops up on the local DMR system, that again is a radio rental type of DMR uh, network system, we'll find the same talk groups that happen and show up year over year over year. So we may find something that pops up on that system for New Year's Eve. Well, again, we'll have to wait and see what happens. So there it is. New Year's Eve can be a really interesting time when it comes to listening on the radio. Again, I like to watch the events on live TV. I may not know the bands that are playing because I'm just too old and out of the loop at this point. And But my wife and my daughter do. So they are entertained by watching TV. I'm entertained by listening to my scanner and knowing what's going to happen next or hear what happens in real time with the show. Now, again, I have to remember that I'm listening to my scanner and my TV is on a delay. So things are not officially 100% in sync, but it's still pretty cool to hear it come over the radio and then see what happens on TV. Don't discount listening to police or fire or OEM. Don't discount listening to FRS, GMRS, uh, ham radio as well. Listen to the sanitation department. Those are the heroes after everybody's all gone, right? They're the ones that clean up everybody else's mess and they do it quickly and efficiently and they are unbelievable at what they do. So a big thumbs up to them for being able to do that in such a short period of time. And it's a great opportunity, right? To find new talk groups on a system. But most importantly, don't forget to spend time with your family and friends and celebrate and have a very happy and healthy new year. From my family to yours, my name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this is Scanner School, where we teach you everything to know about the scanner radio hobby. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll catch you again next week with another podcast episode. 73.